Okay, good evening everyone. For today's vlog, I am tasked to report all about ADHD. So, what is ADHD? So, ADHD is also known as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So, what is ADHD exactly? ADHD is a mental health disorder that includes a combination of persistent problems such as difficulty paying attention, hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior. So, it is a disorder that makes a person difficult to pay attention and control impulsive behavior. He or she may be also be restless and almost constantly active. So, ADHD is not just a childhood disorder, but it could also happen in adulthood. Although the systems of ADHD begin in childhood, ADHD can continue through adolescence and adulthood. Adulthood. So, estimates suggest that about 4% to 12% of children have ADHD. So, boys are 2 to 3 times more likely to have ADHD of the hyperactive or combined type than the girl. The next, there are 3 major types of ADHD. First is ADHD in attentive and distractible type. ADHD. HD is characterized predominantly by inattention and distractibility without hyperactivity. So, in a in attentive presentation, it is hard for an individual to organize or finish a task, to pay attention to the details or follow instructions or conversation. So, the person here is easily distracted or forgets detail of daily routines the next is adhd impulsive hyperactive type so the less common type of adhd is characterized by impulsive and hyperactive behavior without any attention and distractibility so the person here fidgets and talks a lot so it is hard for them to stay still for long smaller children tend to run jump or climb constantly the individual feels restless and has trouble with impulsivity. Someone who is impulsive may interrupt others a lot, grab things from people or speak and inappro inappropriate things from time to time. So, it is hard for the person to wait for their turn or listen to the directions. So, a person here with impulsiveness may have more accidents and injuries than the others. The next is the ADHD combined type. So, the most common type of ADHD characterized by impulsive and hyperactive behaviors as well as inattention and distractibility. So, symptoms of the above two types are equally present in the person. The next, let's go down to the sign and symptoms of ADHD in children. So, first is an attention shows short attention span mubo og attention span dali ra kay ma-distract difficulty listening to others so lisod maminaw lisod kaayo sa ila ang pagpaminaw dili dayon sila ka gets difficulty attending to details so maglisod dili pareha sa uban nga kanang regular lang nga mga children i mean a uh, will Walay ADHD nga mga children nga gamay ni mong storya, dali ra kay sila makakuha gani daghan pa kaayo sila og questions. The next is easily distracted. So dali ra ma-distract like ako gusto ti ganina. Then for organizational skills and study skills. So makaingon ta nga dili gid dali or dili sayon para sa ila ang pag-study o ang pag-organize sa ilang skills kung unsa may na anila. Then, second is hyperactivity. So, seems to be in a constant motion but runs or climbs times with no apparent call. So, maunish la ang mga kids nga na ADHD nga magsigi lang. Kung naka sa klase, magsigi lang o langas. Dagan dire, dagan dito. Then, talk excessively. So, tabian kaayo. Bisag walay rumbo kung sa iyang itabi. 
has difficulty in engaging in quiet activities. So, kay since tabian sila or ila na jud, uh, ila ha na yun na nga sakit, so, dili gid dali dali nila ang mga activities nga, especially when it deals to kanang hilom. Then, fidgets with hands or squirms when in his or her seat. So, ang iyang kamot magsigira o kanang kirew-kirew or unsay term ana niya nga magsigira jud og langas-langas kung naa siya sa bangko bisag unsa lay gunita niya bisag unsa lay makabot or bisag unsa lay makita niya nga magunita niya so in an an ability to stay on task so kung naa ipahimo ang teacher or ang mama sa usa ka usa ka nga trabaho dili yun siya mas steady so Dili kay makuha yung attention sa lain. Dili siya mustadi sa usaka task. Then third is impulsivity. Often interrupts others. So, kusog ka ayaw mo interrupt kung onsa yung gisuryahan. Especially kung nakakasurya, then present ni sila. Has the faculty in waiting his, her turn. So, lisod nila ang pagpahuwat. Dili kahuwat. Kung na ay maglinya, maguna-una gidni or mo musudlot og una bisag nay galinya sa una then turns to burst out answer instead of waiting to be called upon so maguna una og answer bisag ang teacher mo tawag pa unta og student nga lain sa pag-answer then take frequent risk and often without thinking before acting so daghan isla og mga buhat nga diretso diretso ra nga dili ka mag-expect nga wala silang huna-huna kung unsa ilang gibuhat. Then, fourth is this organization. So, children never complete tasks. So, ang aning apart is at children with ADHD, wala jud or dili gid siya makakomplete og tasks, especially kung ang iyahang symptoms or ang type sa ADHD nga naa niya is and attention. So, ang iyang attention sa usa ka task, dili gid mahuman kay since wala nag-focus dito. The next is forgetfulness. So, forget daily task, easily lose things. So, dali kay makalimot sa mga butang nga ilang ibuhat karon din pagkaugma makalimtan na nila. Nilti mo ang ilang kaugalingon or I mean, ang daily routine nga kanunay unta nilang ibuhat makalimtan pa jud. Then, dali kay mawagtangan og butang since kalimtanon sila. The next is daydreaming. Ignore what's going on around them. So, mag-usahay, magsigirag hinuktok. Bisag, walay kalibutsyo kung unsay nahitabo sa palibot. The next is emotionally unstable. So, burst of emotions and inappropriate times. So, As teacher, na ay sometimes nga mahitabo ni nga ang children with ADHD, mukalit lang og hilak, mukalit lang siya og syagit, nga wala ka kahi, wala ka kabaw kung naunsa siya. So, nagburst at na siya sa emotions nga unsa iyang gibati that time. Bisag wala ka nga sayod or kalit lang or dili unta angay nga panahon or touch. The next, let's go down to the causes and the risk factors of ADHD. So, what are the possible causes? Unsay mga hinungdan nga nung ang usaka tao or ang usaka bata nagka-ADHD. So, first is brain anatomy and function. So, a lower level of activity in parts of the brain that control attention and activity level may be associated with ADHD. So, ang kanyang part sa utok sa tao nagka- ADHD. Then, next is significant head injury. So, pananglitan, a person, or ang usakabata nagdula-dula, then, sayang pagdula-dula, napandol, napantok ang ulo, so, possible na mahimo siyang cause, nga nung ang bata na ay ADHD. Especially when, kung ang part sa iyong brain nga nag-control sa attention and activity level, maoy ma- apiktuhan. The next second is genes and heredity. So, it runs with the family, blood, blood relatives such as parents, sibling with ADHD or another mental health disorder. So, a child with ADHD has a four, has a one in four chance of having a parent with ADHD. 
which also likely happened that another close family member such as a sibling will also have a ADHD. Panagnitan ang mama na ay possibility nga ang children nga na ay ADHD is ang iyang mama or ang iyang papa nagka-ADHD pod or ang iyang mga igsoon. Then third is problems during development. So it is nagka-problema during pregnancy. So first is prematurity. So premature ang bata sa pag pagpanganak. The next is prenatal exposure. So exposure to any toxins such as lead or paints or any other toxins. Then exposure to environmental toxin during pregnancy. Then low birth weight. So mauta akong giingon. Pag tao sa bata either premature siya, then gamay siya og timbang or na-expose siya sa mga toxins. Then, fourth is environment, exposure to environmental toxins, cigarette smoking, material drug use, alcohol use, or smoking during pregnancy. So, exposure, environment exposure to toxins such as lead or found mainly in paint or other mga pipes or unsa pa nga mga building or unsa pa nga mga toxins like for example, you mother pregnant ka then naglakaw-lakaw ka then in a certain point na inikalit og buto then na expose ka dito mao na siya possible mahimo siyang cause cause nga ang imong anak magka ADHD kay na expose ka sa toxins while you are pregnant with him or with her then cigarette smoking then also the use of alcohol while nagbuntis ka sa imong anak so due to environmental kanang environmental kanang galgal so you as a mother dapat kung pregnant ka dili jud ka magpagalgal anang unsay na panghitabo sa imong palibot the next let's go down to the complications so ADHD can make a child life difficult so especially kung magcomplicate na siya so first is often struggle in the classroom which can lead to academic failure and judgment by other children and adults. So, possibility kung na kay ADHD niya, tiwasan pa dyan sa mga tao nga nasa palibot ni mo ma, ma possible na muli dyan na siya sa usaka academic failure. Especially kung i-judge ka, especially kung i-bully ka or any other circumstances nga maka-trigger nila. The next is tend to have more accidents and injury, injuries of all kinds than do children who don't have ADHD. So, children with ADHD prone good prone good sila sa accidents and injuries. Ngano kay they tend to do things nga walay they tend to do things without thinking kung makaayo or makadaot ba sa ila ang ilang gi buhat. The next is then to have for self-esteem. So, possibility ani nila since she, especially kung aware sila, children sila nga aware sila nga lahat sila like ADHD. Muten gin na sila nga mag-iwawon sila, dili kay sila mumingal og tao kay mahadlok sila. Their fear, then mahadlok sila, then usa pa sad ibuli sila. The next is are more likely to have trouble interacting with and having accepted by peers and adults. So, mauni. So, they tend to to have, uh, they, they tend to have poor self-esteem. Kaya nga no, mahadlok sila ma-enter akong tao kay basin i-jad sila or dila sila, dili sila i-accept kung unsa sila, especially kung aware sila nga sila na ay ADHD. The next is, are at increased risk of alcohol and drug abuse and other dislinguet behavior. So, children or person with ADHD, possibility prone gud sila sa mga risk. Like, for example, alcohol use or drug abuse, especially kung ang person or there is such a group of people nga mag-drug or mugamit o alcohol, then mahubog, then na ay 
circumstances nga makasugat ni nila ang person with ADHD na ay possibility nga i-bully si Yevin with such action na ay possibility nga i-abuse siya then as far kung i-bully si Yevin makauli ra siya nga safe na ay big impact para si iya which is maay possibility nga i-abuse niya ang kaugalingan kay naa siya ADHD or wala siya kauyon sa gibuhat sa laing tao niya then this would cost kanang i-abuse niya ang kaugalingan then pinaka worst is maghikog siya then now let's go down to the coexisting conditions so ADHD doesn't cause other psychological or developmental problems. However, children with ADHD are more likely than others to have also known conditions, such as Bali here, aside from ADHD, naapad yun sila existing mga conditions. Like first is a possessional dependent disorder is also known as ODD. So, which is generally defined as a pattern of negative, dependent, and hostile behavior towards authority figures. So, it is a negative behavior towards others, especially people with authority or authority figures. The next is conduct disorder. It is marked as an antisocial disorder, such as for example, stealing, fighting, destroying property, and having or harming people or animals. This, the next is disrupted mood dysregulation disorder. So, it is a disorder that characterized by irritability and problems tolerating frustration. So, Dali ra mairita, then na problema sa pag-tolerate, dili ka tolerate sa laing tao kung unsa ang iyang trip. The next is learning disabilities. So including here including problems with reading, writing, understanding and communicating. So the ay possibility nga aside from ADHD na apud siya learning disabilities. The next is substance use disorder. So here includes the use of alcohol drugs and smoking the next is anxiety disorder so here this order which may cause overwhelming worry and include obsessions or compulsive disorder which is also known as ocd so here ma overwhelm dali kay ma overwhelm dali kay ma worry then dali kay ma nervous Hadlokan kayo, mukalit lang og mahadlok siya taman nga wala hinungdan. The next is mood disorder, so mood swings. Like for example, depression and bipolar disorder which is includes depression as well as maniac behavior. The next is autism spectrum disorder. It is a conditions related to the brain development that impacts how a person perceives and socialize with others. So, so it is also a disorder nga mo impact sa usa ka kung unsa niya pag socialize sa others, so unsa niya pag relate sa laing tao. Then last is the tick disorder or the Tourette syndrome. It is a disorder that involves repeated repeated movements or unwanted sounds that can be easily controlled so mga movements ni siya nga magbalik-balik nga or unsa pod kana mag magcreate og sound nga kaya kay mura sila og mura sila mabungol og kalit nga wala kay kabaw sa hinungdan then naa day sila madungog sa ilahang dunggan then now let's go down to the preventions so to heal reduce your child risk of ADHD or as teacher to help reduce the risk of students nga magka ADHD kung wala pa sila ADHD and also to be aware enough kung unsa ay possible nga mga preventions para maiwasan ang sakit nga ADHD so first is during pregnancy avoid anything that could harm fatal development so in times of pregnancy dapat mo avoid jud ka kanang bisag unsa nga makapaharm sa imuhang anak nga gibuntis like for example Cigarette smoking, 
drinking alcohol that is bad for the child nga naasa imong tiyan, then any other things that you are going to do nga makaharm sa imohang anak. The next is protect your child from exposure to pollutants and toxins. So here, as a mother or as a, as a second parent of your students, you must protect your children or your students na ma-expose sila sa pollutants and toxins. Like, kung buntis ang mama, dapat dili siya ma-expose sa mga toxins. Like, for example, mga prenatal toxins or sa panahon nga maglaag siya or sa panahon nga naa siya laktun while buntis siya, then basin possibility, there's a big possibility nga ma-expose siya. Then, next is limit screen time, although still unapproved. It may be a prudent for children to avoid excessive exposure to the video games in the first five years of the years of her or his life. So here, especially nowadays, parents and teacher should or must uh, must advise advise parents not to let their students or let their child or children nga dako og spend sa time sa pagsigigamit og gadgets especially nowadays kay na adyo siya big possibility nga ang usa ka bata magsigi na lang duwa or magkahok sa mga gadget magsigi na lang duwa wala na tayo mo kaon then with that maka-affect na silang mental health so there's a big possibility nga mahok sila maka-trigger sa ilang utok then magkasakit na noon og ADHD. Then now let's go down to the classroom activities. So here we are going to see the responses of the children or the students with ADHD with this classroom activities. So first is stage a creative class project. So studies have shown a correlation between ADHD and a heightened sense of creativity so the overactive mind of students with this disorder yearns for an activities without limited and structural bounds so they can channel their energy into action so a creative project that gives students the ability to succeed yearn praise from their fears and teachers and see positive progress with their education boost their confidence and self-esteem like for examples or like for example fourth police showcase so there are a lot of artists with the students with adhd then you are going to release any opportunity to showcase their work like for example you are going to assign them that they are going to do a uh, I mean, like for example, the students have a creative talent to showcase whenever it is artwork or photography or videography or singing or an instrument. So with this portfolio or with this project activities, you are going to, the students are going to present this in the class. So that would be a stage creative class project. The next is the use of flashcards. So, as teachers, you must find things that don't stimulate the overactive mind of your students. Like, for example, if the students, if one of your students have trouble remembering names, but when he or she see the face or the picture of a certain thing, then his or her attention sticks to it. It is one idea or a perfect idea for developing memory skills by the use of flashcards especially when learning crucial concepts such as multiplication tables additional tables subtractions tables so when your students got home his parents would use the flashcard to teach multiplication tables so that by the day that they will come to school they could remember such things so it will help them get constant reinforcement and visual cues with this interesting way of using flashcards. The next is the role-playing activities. So you as a teacher, especially when you are teaching students with 
ADHD. When you go to school, you could constantly found students tapping their feet, students fidgeting with their fingers, students fidgeting with their clothes, students staring at signs and looking for any excuse to get out of their seat. It is a sign that you must give them stimulation. So, a stimulation which you will give them assignments which require interactions with others and movements around the room. So, it is a way to stimulate and pent out energy that is needed for them to express somehow. So, role-playing activities are a great way to get your students up moving around in a similar way while still learning so like for example in a literature class so this kind of role role playing can be used to give visual presentations of the story being studied or in a math classes like stimulation games where students act out the rule of business people buying and selling item that could that could teach them conflict concepts then fourth is a classroom debate. So another symptom of ADHD is a tendency to blurt out answers before being called upon or before a question is done being asked. So as a teacher, you must create a creative assignments which are perfect opportunities for students with ADHD to shine and find praise that they missed out in a more rigid academic activities. But however... Sometimes a structured a structured activities must be introduced to help ADHD students learn not only to wait their turn but also to take their time weighing their decisions and answers. So a perfect way to instill this instruction and improve your students with ADHD on a certain particular subject is a stage classroom debate so in a structured classroom debates the students get the opportunity to discuss classroom subjects learn more about the lesson concepts and develop patience and critical thinking skills so as a teacher you should actively participate in the debate also to step in when a student is out of line or whenever they want to say or how they would say it the next is game show style reviews and exams so you as a teacher would witness students having a hard time memorizing concepts numbers dates from a lecture but the added anxiety of this is letting them show what they have learned or what they have memorized which made them or which made very difficult for them so, one way to mitigate this anxiety and concentration issue is by turning your tests into a stimulating classroom games. So, this would help students or encourage active participation in verbal communication. So, as a teacher, you would notice something or you would notice improvements like, for example, Students having easier time remembering and reciting information, which is done into an active and a vocal way. So the sound of their voices in reciting information, similar to visual, will be stimulated to their brain and keep their interest better, which is not one-sided lecture, which is not a one-sided lecture or a paper exam. So examples of the game show style reviews and exams are like family feud games pyramid games wheel of fortune games who wants to be a millionaire games and deal or no deal games the next let's go down to the activities happen in the classroom which focuses on the movements of the students so first is heavy work activities so letting the students erase or wash shoe board wash these or table tops rearrange books shelves staple paper into bulletin board sharpen pencil with manual sharpener carry box of books push 
or stock chairs, carry basket of items, wear heavy backpacks, make deliveries to the office, squeeze stress balls or pidget toys, more Move trash can to another location. Cut heavy paper or cardboard with scissors. So, this could be a, a big suits or pwede ni siya sa mga students with ADHD nga. Ang ilang sakit is based on like impulsivity or naslay behavior nga dili nila makontrol. Mas maayo nga. Tagaan, nila sila, na, tagaan ni mo sila o activities nga makapahimo nila nga busy to divert their impulsivity or their attention also. The next is movement activities. Set on a rocking chair when reading or during floor time. Set on an inflated air cushion place on a chair or floor. Hand out papers and materials for the teachers. Push your feet in a third band place around the chair legs. Do head, neck, and shoulder rules while setting. So, this could help students nga na ay ADHD nga mo, mahimo nila o mas relax or mas focus ang ilahang attention. Kay since ang ila mura gani og gitagaan ni mo sila og way nga ma-divert ang ilang movement since naa sila yung mga movement na dili mong makontrol while they are still learning. So, imo na siyang gihatag ng mga activities while their brain is working or learning. Then, next is uh, take a stretch break after setting for a long time. Breathe deeply in a through, through your nose out and through your mouth. The next is the weight bearing activities so push up crab walk spider walk wall slides wheelbarrow walk crash paper into tight ball so kung ako sa students ganahan kayo magsigig dagandagan ganahan kayo magsigig tuyok tuyok ganahan kayo sigig makaglakaw lakaw so let them do this weight bearing activities like mag crab walk sila mag spider walk sila and more the next is the mouth activities Chew a gum if allowed in the school or in your room. Then next is chew straw or coffee steer, steerers. Chew lice rice or tweezel, tweezers. Tweezers. Sip water through a sports bottle. Suck a hard candy or lollipops. Suck applesauce through a straw. Eat crunchy food. So they are go. You are going. You as a teacher, you are going to di- divert their attentions. With such mouth activities. The next, let's go down to the program. So, successful programs for children with ADHD integrate the following three components. So, first is accommodation. So, these are the things that what you can do to make learning easier for students with ADHD. Then, second is the instruction. So, these are the methods that you all are going to use in teaching students with ADHD. The next is the intervention. So, how you are going to head off behavior that disrupt the concentration or disrupt the student's attention or concentration for the students with ADHD. The next, let's go down to the classroom accommodation for students with ADHD. So you as a teacher, you could make changes in the classroom to help minimize the distraction and disruptions of students with ADHD. So first is the setting. Set the students with ADHD away from windows and away from the door. So ipalayo sila. Put the students with ADHD right in front of your desk unless that would be a distraction for students. So ibutang sila at bang kung mahimo. The next is sit in a row with focus on the teacher, which usually work better than having students seated around table or pacing one another in other. The next is create a quiet area free for any distractions and disruptions for test taking and quiet study. Then second is the information delivery. So, give instructions one at a time. So, tag is lang instruction nga one at a time. Then, if necessary, repeat it. The next, use visuals like, for example, charts, pictures, color coding, 
flashcards. The next is a possible work on the most difficult material early in the day. So, unahon ang pinakalisod in the morning pa lang sa pagsugod pa lang sa klase. The next is create outlines for the note-taking that organize the information as you deliver it. The next is the student work. So, here, as a teacher, you must create worksheets and these test with fewer items so give them frequent short quizzes rather than a long test and reduce the number of time dates the next test students with adhd in the way they do best like such as orally or fill in the blanks the next is divide long-term projects into segments and assign a segments and assign a completion goal for each segment so dapat na siya completion goals the next is accept late work and give partial credit so bisag late ang ilang ipang buhat due to their condition you must accept such work then gatagan po nimo sila credit para ma encourage po sila the next is organization so have the student Keep a master bender with a separate section for each subject. So, you as a teacher, you must make sure everything that goes into the notebook is put in the correct section. Like, using color code materials for each subject would be best options or best way. The next is, provide a three-packet notebook. Insert for homework or assignments, completed homework or mail to the parents the next is make sure that the students has a system for writing down assignments and important dates and uses it the next is allow time for the students to organize materials and assignments from home so here you must post or you must remind students or give them a way or give them such notebook to organize their materials for their assignments at home now let's go down to the teaching instruction techniques for students with adhd so teaching techniques that help students with adhd focuses and maintain their concentration on their lesson and their work can be beneficial for the entire class so first is starting the lesson so, signal the start of the lesson with an aerial cue. So, like for example, you as a teacher would use horn or cowbell or pwede sa nimo gamiton ang pito as a way of letting them know that you are going to start your lesson. The next is establish eye contact. So, you as a teacher must establish an eye contact with your students so para makabaw sila or aware sila nga ikaw nag-observe ka nila the next is less down activities so you as a teacher you must less down the activities para mahimo siyang guide information for the students nga ma-guided the next is in opening Tell students what they are going to learn and what you, what your expectations. So, you as a teacher, you must tell your students what are your expectations. Then you must tell your students what are the things that they are needed to do or what are the things that they are needed for a certain subject or a certain things that you are going to ask them to be done. The next is conducting the lesson. Keep instruction, instructions simple and structured. So here you, you must, like for example, use charge or other visual or color coding visual or pwede sa flashcards. The next is bury the face and include different kinds of activities. So here... You as a teacher must let your students with ADHD do competitive games. Kay ang students nga na ADHD competitive ni sila guys. The next is 
have an have an obstructive view set so you as a teacher must let the students touch or let your students know like for example touching their shoulder or placing a sticky note on the students then that's for them to be reminded nga dapat mo stay on the lesson or stay on a certain certain manner or a topic nga imo silang gi-ask kung unsa ilang ipambuhat the next allow the students with ADHD to frequent breaks and let them squeeze with a rubber ball so sometimes students with ADHD nagid sila yung panahon nga mukalitra sila nga dili sila kapugong so you as a teacher would allow your students nga event out gani ang ilang emotions like for example imo silang ipasqueeze og ball or imo silang pakumuton og papil kay para ma mabent out lang yun ang ilang emotions the next is try na to ask questions publicly so your students nga na ay ADHD sometimes wala gyud na sa self esteem then maglisod pod sila og storya so mauwaw ni sila kung you as a teacher would let them answer publicly The next is ending the lesson. So, summarize the key points. So, you as a teacher must summarize the key points. Kaya kung di ni mo yung summarize, masamot sila o galibog. The next is be specific about what you, what to take home. So, you as a teacher must let your students know kung unsa yung dapat dalon ng mga butang or mga books or mga homeworks. Then, unsa yung dapat ibilin sa school. Kaya ang students nga ADHD dali ba ni sila makalimot kung unsay angay buhaton also with dali sila ma wag tangan og butang the next if you give students assignment have three different students repeat it then have the class say it in unison so kay students with ADHD na gyud sila problema kung forgetful sila so you as a teacher dapat imo jud nang balik-balikon kay Bisag ang ilang daily routine makalimtan gyud nila. The next is the academic intervention. So, first given step in creating a classroom support for students with ADHD is understanding the student's strengths and needs. So, here it involves formal and informal assessment as well as collaboration among educational professional as students family so first is giving direction so many students with hd hd have trouble following directions the guidelines below helps address this problem first is number of directions so you as a teacher must give minimal number of directions or you as a peer parents or step at a time so dapat kung matagag direction nila usa-usa jud kay para dili mo trigger ang ilang o look if necessary student let the students repeat the directions to the teacher or to the parent or to to, to the peer partner the next is form of direction so provide written directions or steps or visual model or a compiled project so here you as a teacher or parent you must kanang mag-provide ganit kag-drawing nila kung asa d'yo nang i-direction para ma-remind din sila kung also mahimo din siyang strategy nga helpful para nila para mahimong ang kana nga information mutatak sa ilang ulo the next is written assignments so many students with ADHD have particular challenges with written work due to their motor skills difficulty motor planning issues, difficulty alternating their attention from a book to the written responses. So, students with ADHD may also need assistance breaking a larger task or a project into a smaller one. So, first is, so there are following strategies that can be addressed this need. So, first is deconstructing tasks. So, breaks task into smaller units like limit amount of work per page cover a part of the work on a page allow extra time for completing tasks provide work breaks allow students to use computer to type and use speech to text software 
reduce the length of written assignment. So, from a big task, imo na siyang break into smaller one para mas mahimong sayon sa students with ADHD. Then, next is organization. So, many students with ADHD have significant difficulty with organization. So, they are more likely to respond positively with teachers, establish class routines, and set procedures, and maintain well-organized learning environment. So, there are following supports on a particular useful strategy. So, first is assignment notebook. So, here... Provide the students with assignment notebook to help organize homework and sit work. So, ang assignment notebook makahelp sa students with ADHD kung asa yun siya gamiton. Like for example, kung kaninga notebook para homework ni siya or kaninga notebook para sit work ni siya. The next is the color coded folders. Provide the students with color coded folders, folders to help organize assignments from different academic subject. So, you as a teacher, ang folder nila, imo siyang i-divide, color code na siya para matiman nila kung palitan ang English is green, ang math is blue, the next is homework partner. So, assign the students a partner who can help record homework and other sit work in the proper folder and assignment book. So, this pwede siya ang parents sa children with ADHD, pwede siya ang classmate niya or a sibling nga. Pwede na yung mahimong partner. The next is clean out dates. Periodically, ask the student to sort through and clean out his, her desk, book bag, and other special places where written assignments are stored. So, since students, ang pagyun ni sila, students with ADHD, ang pagyun ni sila magkore-kore. So, let them assign or let them clean their books. So, it is also one way of letting them express or pent out their emotions para ma-figure, ma, ang ila ganing ka ng disorder ganing kay ma-turn into a good or a productive thing na ilang nabuhat para sa ilang kaugalingon or para sa ilang environment. The next is extra books. Provide the students with extra set of books or electronic version of books for use at home. So, here, this would eliminate the students of having remember to bring books back and forth. The next is use of calendar. So, you as a teacher, you must teach your students to use a calendar for scheduling assignments. So, para sa pa ka ng matimanan kay sa students, kay most students with ADHD, makalimot yun sila kausahay kung unsa yun ang ilang daily routine. So, mauna yun ang ilahang disorder. So, with this, it is a big help Nga, magamit ang calendar. The next is checklist of homework supplies. So, give the students a checklist that identify categories of items needed for homework and assignments. The next, let's go down to the treatment and therapies of a person or a student having an ADHD. So, what are the possible treatment and therapies for students with ADHD? So, first is the medication. So, medication can reduce hyperactivity and impulsivity and improve their ability to focus, work, and learn. So, there are two things in medication. If first is the stimulant, it is the most common type of medication used for treating ADHD. Also, consider it as safe. However, there are still risks and side effects on it. So, especially when it is misused. Like, for example, stimulants can, co can raise blood pressures and heart rate and increase anxiety. The next is the non-stimulants. This medication takes longer to start working than stimulants, but can also improve focus, attention, and impulsivity in a person with ADHD. The next is... The psychotherapy and the psycho psychosocial interventions. So first, with psychotherapy and psychosocial interventions is the behavioral therapy. So behavioral therapy is a type of psychotherapy that aims to help a person change 
his or her behavior. So, it might involve practice assistance such as help organizing tasks or completing homework or working through emotionally difficult events. The next is cognitive behavioral therapy. This also teach a person mindfulness and techniques or meditation. So, a person, a person here learns how to, to be aware and accept one's thoughts and feelings to improve focus and concentration. The next is the family and marital therapy. So, this can help family members and foes find better ways to handle disruptive behavior to encourage behavior changes and improve interactions with the patients. The next is parenting skills training, behavioral parent management training. So this teaches parents the skills that they need to encourage and reward positive behavior in their children with ADHD. So it is also would help parents learn how to use system of rewards and consequences to change their child behavior. The next is specific behavioral classroom management intervention. So here, it had shown to be an effective for managing youth symptoms and improving their functions at schools and with fears. The next is stress management techniques. So this can be beneficial for parents of children with ADHD by increasing their ability to deal with prostrations so that they can respond calmly calmly to their child's behavior. The next is support groups. So this can help students with ADHD and help the parents and families to connect with others who have similar problems and concerns. So, kanang kwan gani at some points kanang Litan, you are a parent, then you have a children or a child with ADHD, then ang kaning support group, mao na siya yung lain po nga mga tao, nga naapod sila ay anak na ADHD. So, mura gani siya, makarelate. So, it is a group that often meet regularly to share prostration and succession to exchange information about recommended specialist strategies and to talk with experts. I think that would be all about ADHD. Thank you for listening. I hope that you would learn something.